Now that we have injected the HTTP client in our user service, we can make use of it in that service so that we can make HTTP requests. And there are a few ways that you can make HTTP requests inside of the service in Angular, but I'm gonna show you one of the most common ways to make those requests. So you typically see a function, and inside that function, you return the HTTP call that you're making to the API. As you can see here, our function name is defined. In that case, that's get users and it doesn't take any parameters. But notice one interesting thing is the return type. And in this case, that's the observable. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about observable, but for now, what you need to understand is that observable here means that this code is gonna resolve at a later point in time because we're making a network call and we want to be notified whenever we get some data back. In that case, that would be the HTTP response from the server. And that can be the data that we requested or we can get an error from the server. And then on the second line, we call the HTTP. Remember, we define it in the constructor, which makes it a member of the class. So we're using the this keyword to access it. And then on that HTTP, we access the get because we're trying to make a get request. And this HTTP also contains the post, put, patch, and delete, and a couple more. But in that case, since we're trying to retrieve data, we're calling the get, and then we're passing in the type that we're expecting to get from this API here, in our case, api.com forward slash users. So this API, HTTP colon forward slash api.com, it's gonna return an array of users or a list of users. So the same way we're telling the observable that we're expecting an array of users, we have to tell the get, which is also generic, the type of data that it's supposed to receive from that call. And what the HTTP client is gonna do is, it's gonna deserialize this data whenever this data is resolved or whenever we get the response, and then it's gonna parse it as an array of users. Another example of this is if we're trying to get one user. So in that case, we can define another function, which we're gonna call get user. It doesn't take any parameter. And the return type is also unobservable because this code is not gonna resolve immediately. It's gonna take some time because we have to make a network call. And then the return type or in the body of the response, we're expecting to get a user. And you can see we're doing the same thing on the second line. When we call the get, we pass in the type of data, and then we pass in the URL where we think this data lives on that web service. So this is the typical, most common way that you would see the HTTP client being used on an Angular service. And later in this course, I'm gonna show you a more advanced way that you can do this. And there's really no right or wrong, it's just a matter of what your requirements are. So sometimes you might have an application and it's so complex, you might have to go with the basic way, but sometimes your application might not be so complex and then you can use a more fancy, a more advanced way to do this. So for now, let's go ahead and give this method a try. 